My name is Johnny Miller. I'm a point blank online tutor and I, I write courses and I teach uh, Ableton Live courses for point blank. Today I'm using some sounds from a new Loop Masters pack uh, by a producer called Santos, Italian producer, a very, very well respected, uh, very established in the electronic music scene. And um, this is his uh, Santos Private Tech Collection. And really nice pack this, regular loop, uh, Rex loops and sample patches that you'd expect from a Loop Masters product. Um, and uh, two main folders, sounds and effects. Very, very nice stuff in here, bass synths. <laughs> Lots of very usable sounds to create your own melodies with uh, and also a series of loops uh, Again a wide range lots of bass loops one of which I've used in this set here and uh, Music loops as well all sorts of stuff So if you're into kind of minimal or regular house any type of house really this is definitely a pack that's worth looking at and um, tonight what I've done is just put together a little bass loop and uh, a kick hat and snare pattern just using one instance of impulse and I've got another instance of impulse here with some uh, shaker samples in and I wanted to do in this tutorial show you a little trick on how to split impulse outputs so that you can affect individual sounds within the impulse device with delays and with reverbs and that's normally something you would use a drum rack for but I'm going to show you how you can do it with impulse as well and take advantage of impulse's global parameters which I've looked at before in different tutorials but not on percussion and uh, not using it like this where I'm going to separate all the outputs so that's what we're going to do in this little video here to show you what I've got in my sketch let me just hit play and at the moment this is just one of the Santos bass loops and I just put this in as a guide really just to give me a bit of flavor and then the the drum sounds I've just used three drum sounds a kick a hi-hat and a clap regular pattern nothing special or tricky going on there and again that just gives me something to work with now in terms of a lead element at the moment I've got these uh, these percussion sounds inside impulse another instance of impulse and they're just little shaker sounds if I play the clip So I've just placed a little pattern in here just to sit on top of these beats. Now, I'll be honest with you, when I program that in, I use the technique that I, I use a lot when I'm programming, especially percussion parts, and it's almost random. I'm going to just create a, a clip here. I'm going to switch to draw mode, which is command B. And instead of kind of thinking about where the notes are going to go or programming them in one by one, I'm literally just going to throw some notes down onto the page almost randomly. So click, 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 and it's done. And what you end up with usually is some quite interesting little patterns, which you can then, if you want to, go in and edit. So there, I've just taken away two notes from that little pattern that I randomly just added, clicked in, didn't plan where those notes go, just let the mouse move and click away. And that's quite a nice way to come up with little variations for your percussion. So now I've got two that I can work with. Let's just quickly do another one. So again, just randomly. I'm not going to worry about where the notes are. Whoops, that one's actually on the wrong line. There we go. Okay, how about this one? So again, I'm just going to go in and take a few of these notes out. Keep this pattern a little bit straighter. So now I've got three variations. And sometimes when you guess like that, when you just throw notes down, you end up coming up with something that's, you know, you wouldn't have come up with if you had planned it out and stepped it up bit by bit. Um, it's also quite fun just to throw the notes down and see what comes out. Anyway, going back to impulse, what I want to do is make take advantage of the global controls here on these percussion parts. And um, they're on the right hand side here, global volume of course. And then we've got global time and global transpose. Now we've looked at these before in tutorials. Global time stretches all the samples. And global transpose does what it says on the tin. It's just a pitch control for the whole device. 
Now, having a global transpose like that is very, very useful. And it's one of the reasons why I've used impulse for this instance, for this particular idea, this percussion part, rather than a drum rack, where I've got individual simpler devices for each sound. Here, using impulse, it's a much better device to use because I can focus on a small amount of sounds. I've got a very workable interface here. I don't need to worry about chains or having too many parameters that I'm not going to use. I'm just focused in here on these three sounds and I've got a global time and transpose for those three sounds. Nice and simple. Now what I want to do is be able to kind of play with the time and transpose functions as the track plays through. Get some kind of interesting interesting little patterns If I just keep moving that around, that's something I could maybe program in clip envelopes to get that movement on the transpose and on the time value. Also brings in a bit of a kind of random feel. Uh, feels like the percussion part's kind of alive and doing its own thing. And uh, the last thing I want to do here is just add some effects to some of these sounds. Now, what you'd normally do with an insert effect, for instance, is just throw in a ping pong delay on here. And now every sound is going to be affected with the delay. But what I'm going to do is take the ping pong delay off there and split impulses out so I can actually assign effects to those three individual pads instead, or, or, or if I want to assign effects to just one of them. Okay, I'm going to open up the routing, which is the I.O. button just down here on the right. And then here on the Audio 2 menu, I'm going to select, uh, select Sends Only. Now I'm going to put in three new audio tracks. So I'm going to hit Command T three times. These are going to be the three tracks which I route the audio from impulse pads to. Okay, so audio four, I'm going to go to the uh, input channel and select impulse. And then below that, I've now got the separate outputs from impulse ready to go to select. So I'm just going to select pad number one here. Do the same thing on audio five. That's going to go to impulse and to pad number two. And then on this audio six track, that's going to be my third impulse sound. So impulse. And then input channel on the third impulse pad. There we go. Lastly, I just need to make sure I remember to click the in button. That just opens up the audio. And now, as you can see, if I just turn these two tracks off for a moment, close the routing. There's my three sounds from Impulse. Instead of coming out of Impulse's main output here, you see the volume's dead now on the output. The audio is being sent to these three audio tracks. And so I can put a ping pong delay, for instance, just on audio number five, just on that little sound here. So we can have all sorts of fun adding insert effects to the different tracks from the impulse which has had its output split up and routed to separate audio tracks. Okay, you can learn loads of cool stuff like this at pointblankonline.net and I'll be back again next week to show you more cool tricks with Live 8 and sounds and samples from clickproduce.com. Peace.